Welcome, I'm Sean Lee and I'm an Associate Professor in the Department of Biological Sciences at the University of Notre Dame. Today I'm here with fellow scientist and infectious disease researcher, Dr. Felipe Santiago Terrado, Assistant Professor in the Department of Biological Sciences and member of the Eck Institute for Global Health. Dr. Santiago Terrado is an expert on human fungal infections and his research focuses on the mechanisms of fungal pathogenesis and the development of treatment strategies for fungal pathogens. Felipe, it's great to have you here. Thanks, Sean. Excited to be here. As you're aware, Felipe, fungal pathogens that infect humans have gained a lot of awareness recently. The WHO just released its very first report on the global concern of fungal infections and the particular increase in drug-resistant fungal pathogens worldwide. As many of us scientists were tuned into that report, I can safely say that most of the world was recently turned into the impact of fungal pathogens in another way, that being the recent HBO smash hit series, The Last of Us, which is one of those phenomena that, that creates a lot of awareness, but also lots of questions about the nature of fungal diseases affecting humans. Felipe, I'm sure you've watched the series. Can you tell us briefly about what the series is about for those who may not know? Oh yes, The Last of Us is this post-apocalyptic drama series created by Craig Mason and Neil Druckmann for HBO. And it's actually based on a video game of the same name from 2013 where the player has to navigate human characters across the United States that is infected by this zombie-like creature, which in fact are not zombie, but people infected with fungal pathogens. Uh, the TV series is set in 2023, 20 years into a pandemic caused by this mass fungal infection, which forces humans to transform into these zombified creatures. And that leads to total collapse of society. Uh, the series has two main characters, Joel, played by Pedro Pascal, a smuggler tasked with escorting the teenage Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey, across this post-apocalyptic United States. Yes, and I actually played the video game, so I know that it's been popular for a while but I think the show really elevated everything and has made it a global phenomenon. Early in the TV show, there's a very lifelike scene where a scientist is interviewed about the possibility of a fungal pandemic happening in the near future. Do you think the claims made by the scientists on the TV show are all valid concerns? Are fungi a real threat? And have the spread of fungal infections been affected by things like global warming and climate change? Oh yes, Sean, they are a real threat. And I'll tell you why briefly. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms, just like us. So whatever kills a fungi will also invariably affect our own cells. Hence, antifungals are usually toxic. Moreover, there are very few of them in the clinic, so treating fungal infections is very challenging. And to make things even worse, there are no fungal vaccines. And as the population gets older and because of lifestyle changes and medical advances, fungal infections are increasing. So you put these two things together, increased incidence with inappropriate treatments or prevention, and that's a real threat. Uh, and to your other question about environmental change affecting fungal infection, that is already happening. It's not fiction. For example, deadly fungi histoplasma and coccidioides, for decades, they were restricted to certain areas of the U.S., basically the Mississippi River Basin or southwestern U.S., but now they can be found throughout the U.S. Why? because of urbanization, deforestation, and climate change. Another example more specifically related to the show, Candida auris, an environmental yeast that prior to 2009 could cause disease because it could not grow at human body temperature. But in the next four to five years after that, it was isolated uh, from an ear infection. It basically started causing outbreaks almost simultaneously throughout the world. Why? Because it adapted to higher temperature, and now it could cause disease in humans. And that is the premise of the show. A fungus adapted to human body temperature and started the pandemic. So yes, fungal infections are a real threat. Felipe, that's fascinating. And to follow up on your answer, I want to talk to you about the central scientific premise of The Last of Us, which is that fungal infections can infect the brain and cause this zombie-like state in humans. Can you talk about how realistic that might be? And if there are real world examples of this type of infection happening in nature, can these types of zombie killer symptoms really be caused by a fungal infection? Well, Sean, you may already know this since you're a fan of the show, but the show fungus is based on a real fungus known as the cordyceps fungus. 
They are parasitic fungi of insects. And, and yes, once they infect their insect host, they can control the nervous system and force the insect to go to a higher point from which the fungus can rain spores down to infect more insects. These fungi have evolved for millennia to adapt to the insect's nervous system. So they're not dangerous to humans, even if they could grow at human body temperature. But that is not to say that there are no other fungi that already infect human brains. For example, the fungal pathogen Cryptococcus neoformans, which I work with, is neurotropic, meaning that once it infects humans, it goes to the brain. And some of the initial symptoms that you will experience are actually not that different from the initial symptoms depicted in the show. Muscle passion, headache, disorientation, hallucinations. You can go blind, you can go deaf all of a sudden. All of these are clear ex uh, symptoms of brain infection. But it stops there. The fungus will not be able to control your every move. <laughs> so could a situation like that in the show really happen? Well, not the part about the zombified humans, but a fungal pandemic where millions of people die? Of course, that can happen. And in fact, outbreaks of fungal infections are happening right now. Here's a spoiler alert warning for those who have not watched this yet and don't want to know what happens. It's revealed that in order for scientists to try to use Ellie's immunity to develop a vaccine against the fungus, Ellie will not be able to survive the procedure. You already mentioned that there are no fungal vaccines, but can I ask you more about that? And also, what do you think about the show's vaccine scenario? Is that accurate? Yeah. So despite lots of efforts, there are no fungal vaccines available. And there are several biological and scientific reasons, but I think the main obstacle has been the lack of awareness that fungal infections can kill. And I hope that this is something that this recent increase in attention will help address. But in regards to the vaccine plot of the show, I think it was a very smart idea that the reason that Ellie was immune is because her brain cells secrete something that makes the fungus believe that Ellie is a fungus and not a host. <laughs> very reasonable. Now in the show, they basically needed to take out Ellie's brain to isolate that compound, which obviously Ellie will not survive. Um, probably the writers have never heard of a brain biopsy, right? They only, they only needed to take a small piece of it and grow that in the lab to identify whatever compound was uh, being made in Ellie's brain. Uh, but of course, then there will not be another season of the show. <laughs> right, exactly. Felipe, let's talk about your research on fungal pathogens. Can you tell me specifically about the research that you're focusing on? perhaps also to lessen my fears about this type of pandemic and assure me that experts like you are fighting the good fight. Well, Sean, uh, can fungi turn us into zombie? No, they can't. But can they kill us? Yes, and very easily. Not only because of the problems with treatments that I mentioned before, but because fungi are everywhere. We are exposed to them frequently, and one of the most common is Cryptococcus neoformans, which is the one a fungi that I work with in my lab. We inhale this fungus and it causes a lung infection that in certain groups of people will disseminate and go to the brain, causing a lethal brain infection. The key here is what happens in the lungs first. That interaction between the fungus and our immune cells in the lung, that interplay will determine if the fungus is controlled and killed or if the fungus escapes the lungs and goes to the brain. And that is what we aim to do in my lab, to understand that interaction, because if we understand it, we should be able to go intervene and influence it in favor of the host. So in my lab, we ask questions such as, how Cryptococcus is able to survive the immune system? Um, what are the fungal factors necessary to cause disease? Those types of questions. And, and yes, lots of researchers are trying to understand fungal infections to come up with better and more effective ways to treat them while some are also trying to develop fungal vaccines, all in all to prevent a fungal pandemic from occurring. So my hope is not that all of these recent buzz and attention cause fear, but just to raise awareness. Well, thank you, Felipe. This has been a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to more exciting research coming out of your lab on fungal pathogens. And I'm sure we're both looking forward to the next season of The Last of Us. Yeah, I am. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> <laughs>